Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. This is Madden 18 on EA Sports. Here we've got a couple of big targets who will try to be key contributors in both the pass and run games today. It's the Jaguars going up against the Steelers. With that, it's time to hook up with our commentators in the booth as we turn it over to Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. Right at the convergence of the three rivers on Art Rooney Drive, we welcome you to Heinz Field in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. They love the black and gold here in the Steel City. And a few moments ago, their Steelers emerged from the Heinz Field Tunnel. They're set. We're set as the Steelers are ready to do battle with the Jacksonville Jaguars. And welcome again, everybody, alongside Charles Davis. I'm Brandon God and, and Larry, he took a moment to highlight the tight ends that we're going to see in this one. I know in our production meeting, we were talking about what we wanted to highlight pregame, and you said tight ends. Why did you say that? Because it can be such a matchup issue for defenses nowadays because these tight ends, they're oversized guys, but they can run as well. So who are you going to cover them with? If you use a traditional linebacker, they're usually going to run past those guys. If you're going to use a smaller corner, maybe they'll be too big. Can a safety match up and run with them and also use enough bulk to keep them from just having their way? So, so many ways that tight ends are used nowadays, they're fun to watch. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Jacksonville comes out of the field here. There's Blake Bortles. Maybe he bought a house over in London. Threw for four <laughs> touchdown passes in that big win over Baltimore. Three of them, the hat trick to Mercedes Lewis. Don't they call them flats? Yeah, London? so bought, bought a flat over there. He bought a flat over there. But how about the numbers, right? Four touchdown passes for Bortles. That's what they envisioned after the 2015 season when he appeared to break out. And then Mercedes Lewis didn't have a catch the entire <laughs> season before this game. Caught four, three for touchdowns. He may buy a flat in London as well. They fake the handoff. Now Bortles. And the Steeler pressure too much here. He's going to go down. Cameron Hayward able to collapse the pocket and drop him for a loss of three. Sometimes I watch games and wonder why they use play fakes on certain passing situations because it's not going to fool anyone. I don't know if that was the case here, but the end result was the same. No one fooled. The quarterback was hit. And now the offense will look to respond after the sack. Now the rookie first rounder from LSU. It's Leonard Fournette. And he takes it down deep into enemy territory. A big third down play there for the Jags. And even 80 yards. Well, welcome to the party. First carry of the game. How about that? And just think, as far as he's concerned, he's just getting warmed up. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. To throw is Bortles. Keeps himself upright. Under pressure now, and he's going to go down. Sack back around the eight. Bud Dupree coming on the blitz. He gets him for a loss of seven. Well, that was point-counterpoint, wasn't it? They decided to throw for it on first and goal. Instead, the defense counters with pressure, and the defense wins, getting a big sack. He 
Here's Chris Ivory with his first carry. And he takes it in. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Chris Ivory, an eight-yard touchdown run. And the Jaguars drive right down the field and score on the opening drive. And they do exactly what they wanted to. Opening drive, they get into the end zone, they do it on the ground. And not only is the person lugging the ball happy, of course, because he got it into the end zone. How about the offensive linemen and receivers who are blocking for him? They have to feel great about themselves sticking in the end zone on a running play. Jason Myers now for the extra point. And this is up and good. The score now 7-0 Jaguars. So that drive, four plays. And it's culminated by Chris Ivory taking it into the end zone. Here's Myers now to kick it away. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and they'll take over at the 25. Pittsburgh coming off a disappointing loss in the Windy City to Chicago. They take the field. There's Ben Roethlisberger. And that loss in Chicago, Charles, broke a nine-game regular season winning streak for them. So we know one thing about Pittsburgh. They know how to win. They also understand that one loss shouldn't derail what they do. But there is some cause for concern because we've heard their offensive guard, David DeCastro, their Pro Bowl player, talk about with all the weapons we have on offense and how we block on the offensive line, shouldn't we be scoring more points and putting up more yardage? So that's something that they'll be focused on going forward. But I I'll bet you this, with Ben Roethlisberger at the helm, <laughs> they'll figure it out. And at the end of the day, they're still 2-1 and one going into week four. And he'll wind up with about six, up past the 30 to the 31. That was a good forceful run, and it demonstrates why you've got to put your body on a runner when you're trying to tackle him. If you just go in there and just try and get him down with arm tackles, usually doesn't work very well. And we saw on that play, he'll run right through those attempted plays. A fake to Bell. Now it's Roethlisberger. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. Antonio Brown, the intended receiver. And it's third down. And a peek now at the offense for Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh has long prided itself on being a defense-first team, but if you look at the last three, four, five seasons, it's been their offense has led them. In 2016, they were seventh overall in total offense, and they can hit you through the air, on the ground. No matter what they do, they're hard to prepare for. And the Jags have five in the secondary here on third down. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. And he's got Rodgers. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. And the play goes for 19 yards, gives him a new set of downs. I know at the end of games, coaches always tell us that no one play won or lost a game. But that seems pretty important early, doesn't it? Their, their ability to pick up that first down on third down, I thought that was key. Well, you're already in the hole after the touchdown on the other side. How will you respond? We talk about that a lot, and they responded pretty well there. You go three and out, I think you give up a lot of momentum. You get down two scores, could be an entirely different game. So they've got a nice drive going now. They're in good shape. What's interesting to me is they're also in that spot of the field where you would take a shot. Do you change that up just because you're down a touchdown? And he gets this one all the way down inside the 20-yard line. A gain of 32 that time. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, 
that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. So they're operating in the red zone. From the red zone now, here's Roethlisberger on first down. Over the middle complete, that's James. That throw good for four, it's second down. Here's the defense for Jacksonville. Now over in London, you had Ramsey and Boye, the two corners with a pick each. That's a heck of a duo back there. They're in the discussion about being the best corner tandem in the NFL, and I'm not sure many people thought that as we started the season, but you knew potentially they could be. Getting Boye as a free agent from Houston, they are playing awfully well. I still say in Denver, that's the one you look at. Chris Harris and, of course, Aqib Tlaib, because the third one is Bradley Roby. That's a hard trio to beat. On second down, it's Bell. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. It's an eight-yard pickup, and it leads to a first and goal. Well, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral. Also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other bats in the league. is going to result in losing yardage. They're driven back to the eight-yard line. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Well, forget about finding a lane there. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. Probably fortunate he was able to hold on to the football. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. Second and goal as the offense looks to try to punch it in. And he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. Only a couple yards there, and that's going to set up a long third and goal. Defensively, I think they can smell a stop ball right around the five here brings up third. And I think what they've done is they put doubt in the minds of the offensive guys. What do we do? Because now you don't have a go-to play. Either side they pick, throwing it, running it, it won't be easy. On third and goal, Roethlisberger. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. They told us repeatedly earlier in the week in our meetings, we need some plays from our defense here on the road early. They got one. And don't think they were above all week long pointing out to their defense that the other defense is rated higher than them. You going to let that happen, guys? Is that how we're going to play? And they responded to the challenge. The Jaguars getting set to go. They'll be looking to duplicate that first drive, the one that got them that 7 0 lead. Of course they would. I mean, look, they're on the road. So getting the 7 0 lead was huge for them, right? Imagine getting up two touchdowns. Pressure comes, and the Steelers take him down. TJ Watt not dropping into coverage. He comes on the blitz and takes him down for a loss of nine. And they brought the pressure there just right up the gut, didn't they? Yeah, they certainly did. And, you know, when you've got so many different responsibilities as an offensive line, you got to deal with the nose tackle, the two defensive tackles or ends, and then sometimes you just can't account for everyone. The linebacker slipped free. Second down, here's Fournette. 
spins by. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. Call it a six-yard gain. Still plenty of work to do coming up. Third and 14. And Leonard Fournette impressing there with that run. It's hard to believe that no Jacksonville Jaguar has broken 1,000 yards since Maurice Jones drew in 2011. I think Leonard Fournette could be that guy. Even with the ankle injury last year at LSU, still averaged six and a half yards per carry. And absolutely intimidated opposing defenses. A lot of guys simply didn't want to tackle him. Throwing his borders. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. So possession one ended in six. Possession two likely going to end in a punt. Yeah, that's okay. They just got to get back to what they worked on in the opening drive and continue to make a few adjustments along the way. It won't be exact because the defense will make a few adjustments themselves. Just get back to your game plan. Nortman on to kick as he sends it away. A big kick that time, 52 yards. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. A look at Pittsburgh now on offense, a group that only put up 17 points against Chicago in that week three loss. But Charles, gosh, the AFC North, they lost all four games last week. Cleveland, not a surprise. They lost Indianapolis, but they did have a big furious rally and almost got back into a tie. How about Baltimore going to London and getting thrashed by Jacksonville? And Cincinnati, maybe the surprise of the day, even though they lost, took Green Bay to the limit at Lambeau Field before losing in overtime. Hard as it is to believe, all of them lost, which means no one gained an advantage on Sunday. They'll start out on the ground with Bell. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. And a couple of big boys up front defensively. And in that 4-3, those D tackles so vital. Extremely vital. I love how you describe that because if they control things up front, often it's over the guard. Sometimes they slide and make it over the center. It's really hard to get a play started then because a lot of teams want to start inside out running the football. But against a good 4-3, you may not find any space. And on that play, there was zero space, no gain. He was looking to hit his running back, Le'Veon Bell, that time. And it's third down. That one didn't quite make it to the target, but that's not always a function of the strength of the arm of the quarterback, is it? Sometimes it's just too much pressure there. In any case, the ball doesn't arrive. On third down, Roethlisberger going for the deep ball. And that's caught inside the 35. And oh, so close as he takes it all the way to the two-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And connection number one there on the game, Roethlisberger to Boney Tony, Antonio Brown. That's what his high school teammates used to call him. I wonder what they would call him now. A bit <laughs> more muscular, more successful Boney Tony Brown, right? <laughs> I'd say you're probably right. It may be all of that. I'll still call him Boney Tony, but Ben Roethlisberger calls him my number one target. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. They'll come out in the pistol. They'll try to run it. This is Connor. And this time the yards won't come so easy as they'll, in fact, tackle him behind the line. That'll go as a loss of five. And it'll be second and goal. Well, it's been the air game that's taken them down on this drive before they finally turned around and handed it off on the last play. And now they're looking for the big boys to get them in the end zone. Couldn't do it there. It'll be interesting to see. Offensive lines had to pass block a lot on this drive. Will they be able to revert and fire out and create some space in the run game? Again, it's Connor. And he'll be stopped up after only a couple of yards as he gets it down to the five. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease, anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. The offense on third down, they've been okay. Two for three thus far. They're looking at a third and goal here. Out of 
the gun. It's Roethlisberger. And caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Steelers. Good bounce back drive right there through the pick on drive number one. Drive number two leads him right down the field into the end zone. Agree totally. Excellent bounce back. Tremendous poise. Confidence never lost. And obviously he transmitted that to his teammates as well. What a really nice drive. Chris Boswell now for the extra point. It's good, and we're all tied at seven apiece. So the drive there took six plays, and it ends with the Steelers finding the end zone. So we're right back where we started, all even as the kick's away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. And here is Blake Bortles as we focus in on him for our player's spotlight. And I guess the question, Charles, is what's the formula for keeping him better protected? Because as we see, the protection, it's struggle. And normally what you get is renewed determination. When, <laughs> when the big guy gets hit, that usually sparks people. Hey, we can't let this happen anymore. They take it personally. He's not supposed to be on the ground, but that hasn't been the case so far in this game. So maybe they've got to figure out how do they get rid of the ball faster to help out the offensive line so he doesn't get hit as much. And we'll see if they can keep him off the ground now going forward. Hey. Throwing on first down is Bortles. And his throw is going to be incomplete. And the offensive unit now for the Jaguars. The Jacksonville Jaguars offense in 2016 truly expected to pick up where they left off in 2015, where they were a big play offense by the end of the season, whether it was running the ball or throwing it. But they had some inconsistency in the offensive line and weren't able to reach those numbers. They're hoping for a repeat of 2015 with their 2017 squad. Back to the air on second down. It's Bortles. He'll set up the screen to Fournette. Give him five on the screen play, and that'll set up a third down. And a look at the Steelers' defensive unit. In the NFL, when you say Pittsburgh, you do think defense. And in 2016, they ended up 12th overall in total defense, which is a good number but not the number the Steelers seek. And if they get better play from the secondary, they'll get back into the top 10 where they feel they belong each and every year. The Steelers insert their nickel defense on third down. Yeah, they add a DB. Shotgun now for Bortles. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. It's a great job by this secondary. When I watch them, they remind me of elite defenders on a basketball court, right? They want to contest each and every pass. Great contest on third down to bring up fourth. Here's Brad Nordman now as he'll kick it away for the second time. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. And that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. 
Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. The last possession, these guys were able to tie the game with a touchdown, and now they'll have a chance to move out in front. Yeah, let's give a big assist to the defense who got the ball back. The special teams went out there, handled things. They've got it. They've got momentum. I know they're eager to get out there and put it on display. the drive with a carry by Bell. And he's going to lose yardage here. Back to his own 18. That's going to go as a loss of two and it'll be second down. That goes down as a loss against his rushing stats. But really, should he have to absorb that one? He had no chance on that play before they overwhelmed him. Pretty much on top of him before he could take his first step. It's already second and 12. The defense hoping to push him back more. From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. And able to get this across the 20 before going out of bounds. Steelers on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. This is third and nine. Now Roethlisberger to throw. He completes it to Bryant. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. And a nice gain of 21 yards. And Martavis Bryant back in the fold, which delights not just himself, but, of course, his quarterback, Ben Roethlisberger. This guy, he can do it all, Brandon, able to go across the middle and stave off contact and make catches. Sat out last year, as you're alluding to, year before, though, 50 catches, 765 yards, and six touchdowns. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Yeah, and that was a safety that came through and made the play. But there's no doubt in my mind, he hits like a linebacker. And we see a lot of that in today's NFL, don't we? And that time, we do indeed a big hit for a loss. to get a playoff here as time will expire on this first quarter. It's a tight game here early. More from the Steel City coming up after this. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Back with Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon. It's Steeler football to begin quarter number two, but they face a second and long to start things out. good for five it's third down I think it's okay there they didn't get a whole lot on that play but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy big target guy you can spot pretty easily put it on him when your other targets aren't open and the Steelers on third down they've been near perfect four for five to this point this is third and seven Play action. Now Roethlisberger. 
And James has it. Sheds off the tackle. A big play on third there for the Steelers. And even 40 yards. Jesse James, 10 catches, 131 yards in the Steelers' two playoff games last year. A more than reliable tight end. A guy who can create big-time plays downfield. But let's face it, partner, you love calling that name in a game, don't you? <laughs> I do. But as we saw right there, he's really reliable on third down, isn't he? Yes, he is. Jesse James. defensive tackle spot to snow him under for a loss of four. And it's never good to take a sack. You really don't want to take one down here in this part of the field down near the red zone. Not at all because you're already pretty much assured of a field goal. But you take a big sack, it could push you out of range and that's why defenses get a little more aggressive in this situation. They're almost conceding the three points. They want to push you back and try and take you out of that. Berger with a give to Bell. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. It'll be a gain of 11. And just like that, it's third down. It seemed like the situation was second and a mile to go for a first down, which screams what? Throw the football. You got to pass in order to try and pick up that kind of yardage. But in this case, they ran a tendency breaker because the tendency is for defenses to be out there and be set up for a pass. So you break tendency and actually run the football. That changes everything because if you're able to find a crease, you often have bigger guys working against smaller guys downfield. They picked up excellent yardage there to bring up a third down. Here's Roethlisberger to throw. And he finds McDonald. And he's going to take it in for a Steeler touchdown. Vance McDonald from eight yards out, and the Steelers have taken the lead. The tight end position has always been dangerous, especially in the red zone, short field, but now even more so because these tight ends aren't necessarily the tight ends of old. They're the rocked up wide receivers who have a little bit more speed, way harder to cover than before. well for the extra point. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. So that drive consumes nine plays all told. And it ends with a Pittsburgh touchdown. Well on now to kick this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. The Steelers defense getting ready here. They were able to force the three and out last time, led to the punt, and then led to a touchdown for their crew. So they'll be looking for a little bit more of that, Charles. Well, I think that they created the spark with the three and out. Gave a little momentum to their offense. They said, all right, appreciate it, guys. And they took the ball downfield and stuck it in the end zone. And that defense wasn't out there long. They'll be trying to keep it short here.
They'll start out on the ground. It's Leonard Fournette. And I don't think he got there. No, they stop him right where it all started. No gain on the play there. Second down. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom. Quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. They'll run it again with four now. He takes this for three to the 29. So many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. They go play action for Yeldon. Now it's Bortles. Airing it out for Hearns. And almost picked off. I guess the good news for them now, it's fourth down. Well, they've had a pretty frustrating first half here offensively, and then just continued there with that incompletion. Yeah, definitely frustrating for them, but heartening for the other guys. Those stop troops, they're enjoying things right now because they've made it very difficult for them throughout the half. Here's Brad Nordman now, as he's on to punt for Jacksonville. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. A beautiful fake, and now running right through it. 21 yards, well done on the return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Here comes Ben Roethlisberger and the Steeler offense back onto the field. And the numbers for the last drive, and he was perfect, which maybe isn't surprising because he has not missed a pass in this game yet. And it lets you know just how precise things have to be for a quarterback to be perfect because that means the line's blocking really well, no one's dropping any of the passes thrown to them, and the quarterback is accurate. It's almost like a pitcher throwing a no-hitter or a perfect game, isn't it? He's the principal guy, but he needs a lot of help. Time to find out if he can keep that perfect game going here, partner. Now a first down carry by Bell. And he'll get this across the 40 and up to about the 42-yard line. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team defensive tackles because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles but when he can make a play himself as we just saw there that's a big day on second down Roethlisberger over the middle it's caught by Rodgers the reception good for seven it's third down Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs, as we just saw there. And the Steelers on third down. They've been excellent, six for seven. They're up against a third and one situation. They'll try and run for it with Bell. Fancy footwork at the 45. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. It's funny, partner. Le'Veon Bell, when he came out of Michigan State, when I go back and look at my analysis of him and what my grades were for him, I thought he was a big-time player, great potential. But I didn't know we were going to get this player. I was used to a big, solid, thick running back. But now I've got a full package, a guy who can do everything, as we just saw there, including breaking tackles. But at the time, second round pick in 2013, some people probably wishing they'd taken him in the first. And they'll keep it on the ground with Bell. And he'll bring this one inside the 35. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Some runs are blocked so well, 
you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. They go play action now. Roethlisberger. It's complete to Brown. Right side. And he's in. Touchdown, Steelers. Antonio Brown, 34 yards. And the Steelers find a way to stretch their lead. And there they got him the ball. Just get it to him, let him do the rest. You know, he probably said that to his quarterback as he broke the huddle. I like the play call. Just get it to me. I'll take care of the rest of it. Helping out his rack, right? RAC. Run after catch. And he loves that. And he's going to carry that in at contract time. Extra point now by Boswell. It's good, and it is now 21 to 7. So that drive spanned five plays, and it ends with the Steelers finding the end zone. Well on now to kick this one away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and they'll take over at the 25. Out comes the Jaguar offense now as they get set to take over. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with him punting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. They begin with a run by Fournette. And some room to maneuver. Good yardage as he rumbles for 24 and a first. Well, there's a reason he was the first running back taken. You saw the ability there, the ability to be physical and get downhill. And how about him breaking off a nice game there? There's some Adrian Peterson comparisons out there now. That's high praise. Do you think that they're warranted? Running style, very similar. They keep it with Fournette on first down. And he is going to be knocked flat on his back. Oh, a big hit at the 49. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. Now Bortles throwing on second down. He'll check this one off to Fournette. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. It's a gain of five on the play. And that's going to lead to a third down. Well, he's already proven to be a factor in the running game on this drive. Now he gets involved in the passing game. I think what we're seeing here is the modern version of workhorse in the NFL. Being able to run it and catch it with equal proficiency. From the gun on third down, Bortles. Yeah. 
And that's complete to Lewis. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. Holding offense. Well, they've already allowed three sacks in this first half. Now a holding penalty. So I think drastic measures had to be taken, right? The regular way was not working. He was getting hit almost every snap it felt like. They had to try and keep him upright. The Jaguars on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third and 14. Working from the gun. It's Bortles. He goes underneath for Yeldon. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. Give him six on the play. And that'll bring up fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. Here's Brad Nordman now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. He gets it away, and I think they'll smartly play keep away here from Brown. Out of bounds as he appeared to be looking for the corner. He got it. They're going to mark this at the four-yard line. And let's discuss Antonio Brown as he heads back out there now. He's up over 100 yards, has the touchdown. He's, he's a big-time receiver in this league, so the question becomes, how do you limit him going forward? Well, you know the guys trying to cover him? They haven't had a whole lot of success thus far, and, and while they will still accept the challenge, maybe you have to change your focus. You have to get after the quarterback a little bit, disrupt his timing, because right now it feels like pitch and catch. Make sure he's not able to have clear sight lines to him, and maybe that'll slow him down. And yeah, this is not the guy you want to let play pitch and catch. Now Roethlisberger going to hand the bell. And they'll bring him down right around the 13. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll make it second and a foot or so. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking. And that's from the offensive lineman creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before that he always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. Fake to Bell. Now it's Roethlisberger. He's got his man in the crossing route. And he's brought down after a good game. That one goes for 24 yards. In order to be a great player, you have to be consistent. Antonio Brown is definitely that. Four straight seasons with 100 or more catches. How many more years do you think he can put up that type of production? I think at least another four in a row because their offense is built to get him the football, whether it's outside, inside. And he's a featured guy, and I think that he really, really wants to continue at this pace. This is Bell. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 45. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? Take this one up close to about the 45. Only a yard of the pick up there, and it'll bring up a third down. Well, it wasn't much of a gain, but we're getting near the two-minute warning, so maybe they just want to get to that point, regroup, and decide what they want to do the rest of the half. And the Steelers on third down. They've been outstanding. Seven first downs and eight tries. Here it's third and two. Back 
now as I search for my cue card here. There we go. Coming up at halftime, Larry Ridley will join us from Orlando. He'll have highlights and analysis from our first half of play. Well read. Oh, thank you. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Third and two, now Roethlisberger. And that is incomplete. Perhaps they overthought this one a little bit. They've been running it real well on this drive, and it was third and short, okay? They decided to throw the football incomplete. Yeah, they might have thought just a little bit too hard about that play selection. On fourth down, here comes the Steeler punter Jordan Berry to kick it away. Back deep for the Jaguars, Marquise Lee. And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much leg there. That'll be a touchback. Leonard Fournette making his way back out there. And Charles, you can't really fault him. He's over 100 yards already. He's not the reason they're losing. And that is really unusual because ordinarily, when you set the tone this way and have run it this effectively, usually your team's in control. So it's a very strange situation. And you're right, you can't fault him. He's done a great job for his team thus far. I'm guessing he's saying, feed me on the sidelines. Now will they continue to do it? On first and ten, here's Bortles. And the Steeler pressure too much here. He's going down. T.J. Watt in there to get him his second sack now of the afternoon. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Second down, here's Bortles. And this is caught. Mercedes Lewis with a grab. Now the Steelers put a stop to the action with a timeout defensively. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. The Jaguars on third down. Not good. 0 for 4 thus far. This is third and 8. From the gun, it's Bortles. And this is going to be incomplete. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you got to hit. He's wide open right there got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. Here's Brad Nortman now. He's been terrific so far. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. <coughs> so a change of possession here on the punt. And out will come the offense as they take over. And we put our focus now on Le'Veon Bell. We're in the second quarter. They've got the lead. The lead, though, not so much because of the ground game, because of their air attack, Charles. So what they're seeing so far is the possibility of things loosening up later in the ground game through the air first. Maybe they have to start respecting that even more as the game goes on, and then there will be running lanes to find later. Yeah, try to get him more involved here on this drive, maybe. Six, 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 
Now Roethlisberger on first down. And an incomplete pass. That'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. Hey, you know, switching gears for a second, we were talking before the broadcast about the 0-3 teams who might have the best chance to turn their season around right now. you got the Bengals, Browns, Chargers, Giants, and uh, 49ers. Who do you think out of that group? I'm going to go with the New York Giants. They play in a very tough division, as we well know. But the way the offense came alive in the fourth quarter against Philadelphia, if that continues to ascend, they have an excellent defense, supreme confidence, because remember, they went to the playoffs last season. Right. They didn't get back there with a quarterback who's done it at a big-time level before, an Eli Manning. So I would pick the Giants number one to turn things around, but I'd keep an eye on the San Francisco 49ers. To me, that they're, they are a team that's going to continue to improve throughout the year. The record at the end might not show it, but they're going to be awfully good down the road. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. Throwing now, Roethlisberger on first down. And this would caught along the sideline, but they say already out of bounds. Now the throw didn't give him a chance to turn it up field, and that brings up second down. The effort's always going to be there. Everyone's always going to try and make a catch, but underthrown balls, I think, are the toughest ones to come back and get because usually your momentum's going in the opposite direction when you're trying to stop, break, and come back and get it. Second and ten. It's Roethlisberger once more. And a big loss here as he's taken down. Yannick Ngakwe in there to get him for what will be a loss of 13 yards. I think Jacksonville was hoping, but still it was a bit of a surprise to see Yannick Ngakwe last year. Second in the NFL among rookies in sacks. We just saw another one there. Yeah, he had eight. Of course, last year, a lot of the press going to Jalen Ramsey, Miles Jack, but Ngakwe continuing to put his thumbprint on this franchise. So the sack, and now a third and long situation for the Steelers and Ben Roethlisberger. So we reach halftime here in the Steel City with the Steelers on top. As we'll send you down to Orlando as we check in with Larry Ridley and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? Thanks, Brandon. Thanks, Charles. And welcome to our EA Halftime Report. I'm Larry Ridley. The Steelers are happy to be sitting in the locker room with a lead. The Jaguars just want to come out after the half and claw their way back into the game. So here we go. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Jaguars starting it up on their opening drive. Big time stiff arm here. And he ended up running for a huge gain of 80 yards on the play. Later on the drive, Ivory's going to stay up the middle. And this four play drive goes for a touchdown as they take a 7 0 lead. Steelers take it at the six. Under pressure here, and the ball is picked off. Jaguars defense happy to get off the field. Gets so late in the first. It's Roethlisberger finding his wideout, Juju Smith-Schuster. And this five-play drive goes for a touchdown. Steelers line up at the eight. Steelers tie it up at seven. McDonald's by himself here, and he kept off the long drive with a touchdown. Steelers up now by seven. Steelers with the ball midway through the second. Browns by himself here. All right, Larry, these two teams back out there as we get set and ready for this second half. So both teams have their marching orders and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. 
That's fielded in the end zone. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. The Steeler offense now with a football first here to begin the third quarter. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? I mean, they score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, you think you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. Yeah, still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? The second half starts with a carry by Bell. And a short gain there as he'll get it up only to about the 24. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Tough day, tough sledding right there, and it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. Again, it's Bell. Nowhere to go that time. Might have gotten a yard up to the 25. Back-to-back -back runs. I'd say that encompassed maximum effort for minimal gain. Minimal yardage, and now they're going to need something more than minimal on this play coming up. And the Steelers on third down. Can't fault these numbers. Seven for nine thus far. This is third and seven. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. And Bryant's got it over the middle. And he would be hit with a lot of force and spun down right there at the 43. It'll be a gain of 17 at a Pittsburgh first. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Now a play fake here on first down. Oh, incomplete. A turnover would have really helped there. Almost intercepted. Instead, it's just second down. Well, that play gives us a quick breather here. I want to look ahead to week four of the NFL season. Carolina at New England. I'm curious if the Panthers can break out of a little funk there, Aaron. A little bit of a clunker at home against New Orleans. Many thought they would win that one. They're trying to get Cam Newton going. And, of course, he's got to go take on Tom Terrific in, in the New England <laughs> Patriots right there in their home turf. How about Detroit at Minnesota? Big NFC North battle. Both teams 2-1 and one in the early going. That seems to be an excellent matchup. And flip it over to the AFC. Tennessee at Houston. A monster AFC South game here in the early going. Looking for a cutback lane, but nothing there as he's met at the line of scrimmage. No gain on that one as it brings up a third and ten. So nothing there, but maybe you blame that on the blocking. Yeah, at some point, you've got to win at the point of attack, and on that play, that was all the defense. They made it happen. And the Steelers on third down. They've been tough to stop. Eight for ten so far. This is third and ten. Out of the gun, it's Roethlisberger. Now he'll let it go deep left sideline. That's incomplete, but there is a flag down. So hang on, a big call coming on third down. Holding offense. So instead of giving them another third down, they'll decline it, brings up four. Now that's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back. Good job declining that penalty. Here's Jordan Berry now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. 
Here comes the Jags offense now. Time for their first possession of half number two. Now, if you're a fan of punting, and I know that not many people are, but this game kind of turning into one for you. Well, it's okay if it's a skills contest, right? We're really into it then, but not during the course of an actual game. This has turned into a field position game, though. Sometimes a better punter may actually determine the outcome. here on first down. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he's brought down after a good game. 23 yards on the play. For many teams, the evaluation of tight ends has really changed. We used to wonder about how they would block first and foremost. Now we want to know how these guys can run because we envision them in offenses, catch the ball. How much yardage can they gain after that? And that on display there for a good pickup. Fresh set of downs here. Bortles on the give to Fournette. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and it'll be second and 11. But these guys are going to chop into that deficit. They got to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage, no yardage would be found. So now 11 yards to go for this offensive unit. It's second down. Shotgun now for Bortles. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete. So the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. Well, in tapping those toes, he tried to get both in bounds. He could not do it, though. In tap dance parlance, could not complete the shuffle. All right, needed to get that shuffle down with both <laughs> feet, not just one. Is that what they say? There it is. You know, put a little sand down on the stage. <laughs> I'll take your word for it, my man. And he hits his target, the tight end Lewis. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. Here's Brad Nordman now, as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. And this is going to be ruled out, I think, just inside the 20. Yes, it will. Side judge calls it at the 19-yard line. Back onto the field now comes the wideout Antonio Brown. Seems like the measuring stick for a receiver for a great game is 100 yards. Well, he's well past that now. And as we analyze how he's getting him, that's where it really becomes fun because, let's face it, they keep sending coverage at him, keep trying to put the pressure on, yet he finds ways downfield and finds openings. That's a really crafty receiver. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. They'll try and get the running game going with Bell. And he'll get across the 20, but only to about the 22-yard line. A gain of three, second down. Third quarter, and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. Seven yards to go on second down. Here's Roethlisberger. And his throw's going to be incomplete. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them. And not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily, fell incomplete. 
third down, Roethlisberger. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Malik Jackson in there to get him for a loss of nine, and that'll lead to fourth down. Now that was just absolute perfect man coverage. Nowhere for them to go with the football led to a sack. And that's really difficult to do in today's NFL with all these gazelles running around that you're trying to cover in the secondary. Here's Jordan Berry now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Wow, evasive. Make a miss. An excellent return that time, 26 yards. And the Jags will have great field position to start this drive as they take over on the short side of the field. Jacksonville as they get ready to go and with this deficit you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away you know what I would tell my offense right here the punter doesn't exist guys he doesn't even exist he's not, he's not a team anymore I just cut him <laughs> all right so you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points no way does that guy get on the field on this drive uh, poor punter yeah he, it, it wasn't his fault but so, <laughs> hey listen there's some guy there's got to be casualties at times we're trying to win a game Now a play fake, Bortles. And his throw is incomplete. Offense still needing 10 yards, second down. And he almost intercepted it. They haven't picked a ball off yet. That probably should have been their first. And it's third down now. The Jaguars on third down. They're struggling. 0 for 6 thus far. This is third and 10. Throwing now is Bortles. And that's incomplete. So the defense forces a three and out, but they got some help along the way. They threw it on first down, and when they were unsuccessful, it became second and long. Didn't get it again on another pass. Went third and long, and they almost had to put it in the air. They may want to rethink some strategy going forward. Here's Brad Nordman now, as he's on to punt for Jacksonville. Averaging 50 yards of boot so far as this one's away. And they'll play keep away from the returner as this one will be marked out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Pretty good spot. Getting set to go again, Ben Roethlisberger marches onto the field. He's played well. Good first half. He's continued that here in the third quarter. But my question, when you're a head coach, what do you look at stat line-wise for your court? Do you go right to turnovers? You really do. As much as coaches don't want to talk about that, that's where it starts. When I played in college, our first rule for every game, the team making the fewest mistakes will win. And that's kind of how they judge you. Do you take care of the ball? not turn it over, keep it in the proper hands, and give your team a chance to win. Well, that's what he's done here in this one so far. Avery Jones never giving up. He's able to keep working and get him for a loss of 12. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again.
And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Now Bell. And he'll get him a little space here up to the five-yard line. Give him four yards there, but still in a big hole. Third and long. Facing the prospect of a punt from their own end zone. They need some cushion. Let's see what they can do on third down. From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. And that is incomplete. Here's Jordan Berry now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. So a short drop, but he's able to get it out, and this is a good kick. Oh, shifty! Whoa! Now a hit and a loose football. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble, or that could have been trouble. And that's what friends are for. Right. <laughs> As the returner, you know who you're buying dinner for later. Oh, without a doubt, because he just took care of you and your team in a big way. You know, you turned it over there. That's a big momentum changer and put your defense in a bad spot. It's Bortles. And they can't get the long connection as it falls incomplete. Well, they haven't had a whole lot of success in the passing game here. Now, in the second half, he's thinking, I guess maybe just take a shot deep. I think you're right. Almost looking for a bailout, isn't he? Can my receiver go up and make a big play for me? Can I create a penalty downfield? Maybe pick up an interference call and get that yardage downfield? Anything trying to get going again, but you're right. He definitely took a shot. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. The Jaguars on third down. As bad as you can be. 0 for 7 thus far. This is third and 10. To throw his Bortles. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Brandon, I think you understand the type of afternoon this offensive line is having. It is a long one for them. Long for you to spend it with me. Long for them trying to block those guys. They've given up a whole lot of sacks, and the speed and quickness of that defensive line is eating them alive. Here's Brad Nordman now, as he's on to punt for Jacksonville. And did they keep it in? They did. They kept it in. It's down close to the goal line at the one-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tend to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. And not great starting field position here for the offense. Here's Bell. And he'll find a little space. He gets this up near the 10. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. But both teams practice this situation. 
And this time, the guys on offense won, and in a very nice way. What a run from that position on their own goal line. Gave them some good breathing room. I wonder now, do you still stack the line of scrimmage, or do you play normal defense? They may have backed them off with that run. Second down, here's Roethlisberger. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Bryant, and he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 15. A Steeler first down, Roethlisberger to Bryant. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz game and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle, it doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Off the play fake, here's Roethlisberger. His throw incomplete. He was looking for his big tight end there, Jesse James. And that'll bring up second down. Second down here after the incomplete pass. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he finds enough of an opening to get this one back up to his 20. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll set up a third down. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get them into a manageable third down because they had the incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. From the gun on third down, it's Roethlisberger. And he finds Hayward Bay. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. Big Ben fighting Hayward Bay to get the Steelers the first. Nothing flashy there, the slant to the slot. Oh, and the frustration for the defensive guys, because it's a quick play, and you know it's going to be a bang-bang play in terms of the throw and the catch, and then he's able to absorb the contact to complete it. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Roethlisberger will hand to Connor. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. And third quarter here, you've got the lead. This is where that strong run game can really benefit you. Stayed in bounds there, kept the clock going. I like all the points you just made there. And if you throw the football, and it's incomplete, now you've stopped the clock and you've helped out the guys on the other side of the ball. So keep it in the hands of those runners, keep moving it, keep grinding clock. They stay on the ground, here's Connor again. Fights through and now a crease. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Pittsburgh getting 16 yards there and also a first down. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. down it's Roethlisberger blitz coming and down he goes Calais Campbell he's the one that got to him he takes him down for a loss of nine 
Calais Campbell, all six feet, eight inches of him, signed away from Arizona in the offseason. He's going to be a mainstay, the defensive front for Jacksonville. Eight sacks last year, hoping to build off that. Those eight sacks were just one off his career high. Yeah, he's an excellent player, whole lot of man. do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL and it's on EA Sports. Back now in Pittsburgh. It's Steeler football and they have the lead as well as we begin quarter number four. And the eighth play on this drive coming up. On second down, Roethlisberger throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. So it's third and long, and defensively, not a real surprise. They're in the dime. Now it's Roethlisberger. Stays Jaguar pressure and a Jaguar sack. This has been a tough one for this offensive line. It appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game, the way they've been pushed around. Six sacks given up in this one. Here's Jordan Berry now as he's on for the fifth time here today. He gets this one away and boy it's another boomer. And this one hits at the three and then bounds into the end zone for a touchback. The Jags offense now gets set and heads back onto the field. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, realize <laughs> it hasn't worked so well. Go to so something well, else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. First down, Bortles. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. A 14-yard first down pickup for the Jaguars. At this stage, this drive's got to be touchdown or bust because you need two of them. And if I'm the offensive play caller, I'm not just looking at my dagger plays downfield. I'm looking at some of my specials, something that can fool them and give you a big play now. With a sense of urgency. No doubt. So here we go, first and ten now. Play action. Now it's Bortles. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. T.J. Watt getting him once again. His third sack of the afternoon. This has been a tough one for this offensive line. It appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game, the way they've been pushed around. Six sacks given up in this one. to throw on second down. 
And complete to Lewis over the middle. And he's finally taken down, but not before getting across midfield and across the 45-yard line. Personal foul. Press mask. Defense. Tack on 15 more for the face mask, and that becomes a huge play. Big pass gets caught on you. You're doing everything possible to get him on the ground, and sometimes you end up grabbing the face mask. And now a first down following that long game. Now whistles here, and I believe one of the Jaguar linemen might have moved. So that'll back him up five. from the gun. It's Bortles. And his throw here is incomplete. Unable to connect on the first down pass play. Now it's second down. From the gun, it's Bortles. And he's going to be taken down. Pressure gets there back at the 39-yard line. T.J. Watt, who else? He's in there for his fourth sack of the afternoon. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. We've seen it demonstrated time and time again to the tune of seven sacks in this game thus far. the sack third and long for Bortles and the Jags to throw it's Bortles under pressure again and down he goes again Cameron Hayward in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon the amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary let's just face it this offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Here's Brad Nordman now, as he's on to punt for Jacksonville. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. Getting set to go again, Ben Roethlisberger heading back out there. And the passing game, I mean, look at the numbers. It's fallen off. When a team is struggling, sometimes you look at the quarterback. When the quarterback starts to struggle, who goes over and picks him up? Yeah, that's always a big one, isn't it? Usually, there's a quarterback whisperer somewhere. And what I mean by that is, whether it's an assistant coach, whether it's one of his best friends on the team, someone that can get in his ear, get with him, and say, all right, my man, what do you need? What's going on here? So he's one person he can lean on. He's going to have to lean on that guy right now. A fake to Bell. Now it's Roethlisberger. Bryant with a catch right side. And they'll get it all the way out near midfield to the 45. A good pick up there, 26 yards. They have the nice cushion. <laughs> they just want to pour it on right now, still throwing the football. And I know my background says, why do you need to do this? Just go ahead and run out the clock and get a win. But as many people pointed out to me, it's a video game, man. <laughs> go ahead and put the numbers up. Sportsmanship, not an issue. Exercise those fingers.
on the counter. Here's Bell. And he'll only get a yard, maybe two, up to the 46. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking, yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. with Bell and able to push his way forward here for a good little gain give him six yards on the carry it's going to be third and three now the recipe is pretty simple I think right just <laughs> give your superstar the ball continue to feed him yeah don't overthink this one right make sure he's touching the football but you're also counting on his intelligence and in playing the game as well if it's not there don't force the run just make sure you hang on to the football and keep the clock ticking on third down, that's Connor. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. 12 yards that time at a Pittsburgh first. And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. So it'll be first down here after the run. Now they'll throw it with Roethlisberger. Looking left side, and he's got a man. It's James. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. The completion good for three, and it's second down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. They go play action with Roethlisberger. Over the middle, it's caught by Rodgers. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 to the 5-yard line. A really good pickup of 28 yards. Still throwing the football here, even with the big lead. Yeah, I know you and I came up in a different era, and we think about sportsmanship and all that. Other people think about fantasy points and getting their numbers. That's all they care about right now. comes play number six on this drive. They'll go back to the ground with Bell. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game. It'll be a pickup of four, and it brings up second and goal. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take, puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. Here's Connor. And heavy contact. He is knocked down hard. They're held again, and do we have a goal line stand brewing? It's third and goal. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists, and if you're doing it, you're probably going play action since you ran it twice. But I often think that second down is a time you go play action and throw the ball. I say commit to the run and think about it being four down territory. And he's not even going to get back to the line of scrimmage. 
That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. Now this feels like old school football because this has turned into a good old fashioned goal line stand. So on offense, what do you do now? Do you decide to run it or throw it if you go for it on fourth down? Now Chris Boswell for the Steelers field goal try. This to make it a three score game late. And Boswell's kick is good. And that'll push the lead up to 17. And you figure with that, this game's pretty well out of reach. It would take a heck of a comeback at this point. Being three scores down, I think that's too much to ask with time winding down here in the fourth. After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And the decision to bring it out will cost him about five yards as he'll get this only back to the 20. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. First down is Bortles. Now he's hit, and Bortles fumble. It's loose. And the offense does cover this one, but back inside their own five-yard line. And a little bit of good fortune there. He wasn't able to get it back, but he did have a teammate on the spot able to retain possession for them. So after nearly turning it over, new life here for the offense on second down. Back near his goal line, here's Bortles. And he is gonna go down in the end zone. Down goes Bortles, it's a safety. So a failure there to get rid of the football. I don't know in the end that it's gonna matter much here with this game, but it yields another two points. Yeah, I think I'm with you. It may not matter a ton with the deficit that's already there, but like my old coach used to say, it sure ain't going to help. <laughs> it doesn't help indeed. So a free kick situation forthcoming from the 20 as they'll punt this one away. This will be fielded at the 17. The Steelers offense now, they head back onto the field. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point kicker. Exactly. <laughs> he put it through the post. That's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> toe bash. I don't know about <laughs> toe that. Toe <laughs> Super toe. <laughs> Bell. Not much there. Maybe a couple up to the 35. 
And when do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time, and that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage. Use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. And they're going to take it all the way down and just take the delay. Delay game, offense. So this will be accepted Still as it moves down. the offense backwards. little game. And it looks like a pickup of six. That leaves him with seven yards to go on third down. Well, partner, Marvin, our number one stats guy, just handed me a little card that says he has 97 yards on the ground today. You think he's going to get the ball again? I think so. Three away from that century mark. Gotta have it. Yeah, and I think what they're going to call is one of his favorite runs, whatever he feels comfortable with, and what the offensive line has executed well today to try and get him over 100 yards. So the Steelers with the football as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? Neutral zone infraction, defense. Oh, I got nothing. A little antsy on the left side of the line. Yeah, I think they got the guy in the end. I think they got the DN there on that one. And let's face it, he is so amped up. Wanting to get a good get off on the snap. Jump too quickly. Offense coming up, needing two yards on third down. Now it's Roethlisberger. He completes it to Bryant. And he brings this up to the 46. Good enough for the first. And just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. And that's understanding where the markers are because it's not just running to them. Because on the catch, you could actually be pushed back before the first down. He's getting past it and allowing that opportunity to drip back towards the first down line and still having picked it up. Really well run. So the offense has it first and 10. And the play clock is going to run out here. They're in no hurry to get a playoff. Delay game, offense. So that one will be accepted. First and 15 here behind the chains. They'll run it with Bell. And he takes this up right near the 45-yard line. Four yards there on the carry, gets it back to second and 11. I have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now, I could be in that huddle with that offensive line. I know exactly what they're saying. If you call a pass play here, we're going to call timeout. Run the football. <laughs> We've got control of this thing. Get in behind us and let's go. Their time to shine. On second down, it's Bell. 
And no room that time, getting it to about the 46. Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. The Steelers are winners as we say so long from Heinz Field.